So the next talk is uh, about the iterative random oracle, uh, universal approach for finding loss in security reduction by uh, Hu Chang Gao, Billy Tashiro, Yu Nun, and uh, Go Mao Chen, and uh, Jin Shang Lai, Go Min Yang. Uh, sorry for my bad pronunciation. Yeah. And uh, Hu Chang, Hu Chang will talk. Yes. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, before the presentation, sorry, I would like to say hello, hi to my son in front of the camera who is looking in from YouTube. Hello, John. I'm here. Uh, thanks for waiting. Uh, this work uh, is uh, joined with Willy uh, Susilo, Imu, Gomo Chen, Jian Chang Lai, and Gumin Yang. We were from the uh, University of Wollongong when submitting this paper, but now the first author has been back to China. Uh, about this work, I would like to introduce uh, its overview first. <coughs> in the random oracle model, we can prove a crypto system such as uh, public encryption in the int uh, security uh, mode and the uh, computational hard problem, such as the CDH problem. Uh, the solution to the computational hard problem comes from one of the hard queries to the random oracle made by the adversary. Uh, when the decisional variant of this problem is also half, the simulator doesn't know which query contains the correct solution. Therefore, the si simulator has to randomly pick one query as the solution. And finding loss refers to finding an incorrect solution from uh, hash queries made by the adversary. So we, we introduce iterate random oracle or complex uh, random oracle to address the finding loss towards type of uh, title reduction. Uh, there are two types of security reduction. Uh, in security reduction, we will use the average attack to uh, solve a hard problem. Uh, in the first reduction, is the uh, unforgeability security based on a computational hard problem. Uh, for example, in the digital signature scheme, we uh, use the forged signature to solve a computational hard problem. Uh, in the, int, uh, the second one is the uh, int uh, security based on a digital hard problem. For example, in the public encryption, we use the average guess on the challenge type test to solve a decision hard problem. And we know the computational hard problem is always hard than its decision variant. So a natural question is, can we have an in uh, security reduction based on a computational hard problem? Uh, in this uh, security model and uh, reduction, the average is output is just zero or one, but the simulator's output is a solution to a computational hard problem. Uh, it seems impossible to carry out such a security reduction because the average guess, zero or one, cannot provide sufficient information uh, for the simulator to find a correct solution from an exponential size solution space. However, uh, using general local mode, we can uh, have uh, this kind of in a uh, CH3 reduction. This one is possible. Suppose a hash function H is treated as a random oracle. In this kind of random oracle proof, when, um, when an, the adversary makes a query on a string X to the random oracle, we have uh, two nice properties. The first one is that HX is uniformly random and it depends on X. We use this one for some kinds of perfect security analysis. And the second one is that HX is controlled by the simulator. This one is the most tricky part in the security reduction. Uh, Consider, considering this uh, following sample test, uh, composed of three components, G2X, G2Y, and the hash on G2 power X, Y, X all the message. Suppose an adversary uh, can distinguish the encrypted message uh, from M0 or M1 in the general mode, we can construct a, sim a simulator to solve uh, the CDH problem, given G, G2A, G2B, and aim to compute G2AB. Uh, the simulation is uh, pretty easy. We just set the channel subtype equal to g to power a, uh, g to power b, and the random string r. Then we have the following observations. First, no query on g to a b uh, to the random oracle. No break on the cipher test because according to the property of random oracle, this will be a one-time test. Uh, according to the assumption that the adversary can break or distinguish the encrypted message, we have g to a b will appear in one of hash queries made by the adversary. So we have one of hash queries is the solution to the CDH problem. Now, the question is, uh, suppose the average made the following uh, query to the, to the random oracle, Q1, Q2, to QQ. The question is, which query is the solution equal to G to AB? Uh, we know that when the, uh, when, the D, uh, when the DDH problem is easy, the simulator can run the test uh, to 
on each QA until you find the correct solution. Therefore, the success probability of finding the correct solution from the QA set is probably one. But if the DDH problem is hard, then we have the simulator has to randomly pick one QA as the solution. Therefore, the success probability of finding the correct solution is just one over Q. And unfortunately, the number of hash Q or Q in a polynomial time can be as large as 2 to 60. Therefore, this kind of reduction must be a loose reduction. So uh, we define uh, how to find the correct solutions from the average Q set. And we call this problem a uh, finding problem. And the reduction has a finding loss if the probability of finding the correct solution is less than one. So uh, in this work, we focus on just focus on the line tree work case that the decisional variant of a computational hard problem is also hard. And OK, uh, the IND, uh, the int uh, CH3 reduction, oh, sorry, uh, the int CH3 reduction can be summarized as this kind of framework. The simulator is, uh, is first given an instance. Then it will use what it knows Oh, okay, all it knows to simulate a scheme for the adversary. And then the adversary will make a set of queries, a set of queries to the random oracle. And one of uh, Haji queries is the challenge query for breaking scheme. Finally, the simulator will use the query set to find the solution to the instance. This is the framework uh, used uh, in this kind of uh, int uh, CHP reduction. Um, uh, now, suppose let uh, CIP be a solution to an instance uh, under a computation hard problem P. So we have notation CIP a solution instance I and the problem P. Now, before disclosing this kind of simulation to the adversary, we have that the adversary is given a scheme and it will make a several query where one of query uh, is the challenge query for breaking the scheme. Okay, but once we disclosing this kind of simulation to uh, the adversary, or just this, just this, this causing this kind of simulation is equivalent that the, the adversary is given an instance, and the adversary will make a set of queries where this kind of query set, including uh, a challenge query, equal to the solution to the instance. It means that we will use that one to solve the hard problem. So, uh, the traditional approach uh, we also see with this kind of finding loss uh, can uh, can be described as this: the simulator is given an instance i and the problem p, and it will use this instance i to simulate a scheme for the adversary. Then the adversary will make a set of queries where one of the is the challenge query equal to q, uh, this one is actually is the solution to the hard problem under the instance i. And in this case, uh, this is the uh, approach, uh, traditional approach associated with finding loss. And in this case, the simulator can only solve the hard problem with probability one over Q because the simulator doesn't know which QA uh, contains the correct solution to this kind of this half problem P, uh, half problem I. And in Eucrypt uh, 2008, uh, Gash, Kips, and Shub proposed a new computational half problem called the twin development problem. And this uh, new half problem is as hard as the CDH problem, while the DDH problem is also hard. And the advantage of this scheme is that a scheme based on the twin development problem have no finding loss in security reduction. Okay? And the cost on the CKS approach is the trapdoor test. And given an instance I1, suppose there exists a particularly constructed instance I2 and the trapdoor test agreement, such that this kind of trapdoor test with two inputs, two inputs, Q1 and Q2, and this kind of trapdoor test agreement will return true if and only if. Q1 is the solution to instance I1, and Q2 is the solution to I2, to instance I2, except with a uh, manageable probability. Suppose there is just such a particularly constructed instance and the chapter test, then the CKS approach associated with finding loss can be described as this. The simulator is given an instance I, then instead of using instance I to simulate scheme, the simulator will use two instances. I1 and I2 to simulate a scheme for the adversary. And the adversary will make a several queries, where one of the queries is the challenge query. And this challenge query has two components, composed of two solutions to both solutions, I1 and I2. And in this case, uh, we can prove that 
the simulator can solve the half problem with success probability once. I mean, it's one is us to uh, to find the solution for the choice set. Uh, if there is a triple test on solution to a given instance I1 and the created instance I2 here, uh, in this kind of approach, the simulator just set I1 equal to I, and uh, I2 is the created instance for triple test. And in this approach, there's no finding loss because uh, the simulator can run the triple test on or on or QA set and only the challenge QA can pass the, the capital test. Therefore, there's no finding loss in this kind of uh, reduction. And the summary of this CKS approach is that this one is very smart and very easy in understanding. Uh, this approach, however, requires a capital test. This is the condition. And the proposed capital test can be adapted to many, as many competition half problem. And but this one is, is dependent on uh, the proposed uh, capital test can be adopted to yeah, many half problems. But this one is the, also the limitation and also our motivation. We want to propose a framework can apply to independent of half problems. Uh, our approach is associated with uh, finding loss. So we, uh, sorry, sorry, it's associated with uh, iterated random oracle. So what is iterated random oracle? Suppose the adversary needs to uh, make a challenge queue in order to use its output to break a scheme, okay? Uh, challenge queue output to break a scheme. In the traditional general oracle model, this challenge queue actually is associated with one special input to the random oracle. Just one special input to the random oracle. But in the iterate random oracle model, this kind of, uh, the challenge queue actually is associated with n special input to the random oracle. And must be queued in this kind of iteration ways. Uh, each input to the random oracle must be composed of a new input plus oracle response on previous input. And this is the framework of this kind of iterate uh, random oracle. And we define the iterate uh, query in this kind of uh, approach. And each uh, iterate query has three components. Uh, upper actually is a, com a response of a hash query, or it's just an empty string. And Q is a weight or can be any other strings uh, chosen by the adversary. And also I to denote the iteration time. So uh, each query has three components, response, weight, and iteration time. And we define uh, the change query here. Uh, we said the change query is associated with n special input. Here, that's each special input actually is a solution to a distinct instance under the same problem, p uh, concatenated with its index. Suppose this one, input one, actually is a solution to instance i1 concatenated with the instance uh, uh, index, index i. And the change queue here we define actually is the last input uh, to the general code to obtain its, uh, uh, its output. And so it's uh, actually it's a Q star n here. It's the la last input here. And we can use this kind of formula to describe or define the Q star n from the beginning to the end using this kind of iteration. OK, uh, this is the change queue. And this uh, is the main contribution of uh, our this will work. Uh, so we uh, prove it in this way. Suppose the uh, simulator is given an instance i under the problem p, then the simulator will use an instance under the same problem p to simulate a scheme for the adversary. And the adversary will make a, a, a several query where one of the is the change query equal to the defined uh, change query, like this way. Uh, in this case, we can prove uh, the simulator can solve the half problem with success probability 1 over n times q to power 1 over n. And this is the comparing. We can see that even q is as large as 2 to 60, and n is, is just 10. We have uh, the success probability of finding the correct solution is 1 over uh, 640. Uh, this probability is much larger compared to uh, the traditional approach about 1 over 2 to 60. But yes, it's, it's, it's not as big as one in the CKS approach. And these are the main difference uh, in three series. Ours can be uh, adopted uh, for all hot problems, uh, but it has a small finding loss. And finding efficiency refers to the time cost of picking uh, the query from the query set. And query efficiency uh, refers to the generation of query, uh, the generation of challenge query. And, okay, the main, uh, the next one is about 
to explain how to prove we can uh, have such a high probability. Uh, to prove it, we need to represent our curate using a tree. Uh, we will use an edge to denote an input and uh, its end node to denote its output of Jenton Oracle. So, uh, for example, there are three curate, Q1, Q2, and Q3. Uh, Q1 using empty string because of this all. And Q2 use the response of Q1. And Q3 using the response of Q2. Then we can represent these three curates here. This is edge for Q1. This was the response of Q1. Q2, response of Q2, and Q3, and response of uh, the Q3. And then, all iterate queries made by the adversary to the random call learned can be represented using a tree in this way, with level n. And we have uh, these uh, three properties. First, all queries with the same iteration, same time, are edges at the same level, i. And all queries with the same response are edges from the, uh, the same node. For example, these three, this query, this three query must have the same uh, response uh, here. And all edges uh, starting from the same node, for example, from the same node, must have different weights because they already have the same response and iteration time. And taking this one as an example, suppose P is the CDH problem. An instance, I is composed of G, G to AI, uh, G to B. Here, G and G to B are shared uh, element for all instance. And the solution is equal to G to power AI. B, and we use a red and solid edge at level i to denote a query whose weight is equal to g to power ai b, and we use a blue and dash edge at level i to denote a query uh, whose weight is not equal to g to power ai b, okay? And then, this is, what, is uh, what a tree looks like made by the adversary, and this tree is totally decided by the adversary. But we have all the following three properties for whatever this kind of tree looks like. Uh, each level could have more than one red and solid edge, okay? Each level could have more, for example, this one. And all red and solid edge at the same level must be from different nodes because uh, this edge uh, is, uh, is the weight. Uh, from the same node, they cannot have, they must have different weights. And if that kind of challenge query exists in the query set, there must, there exists one red and solid path from the, this root to, uh, to a leaf. Uh, HQ star. Actually, this one is the, is, is the value that the adversary needs to break the scheme. Oh, sorry. And how to prove it? Okay, uh, given instance, I, the simulator will just work as the follows. Uh, uh, the simulator need to choose a random uh, integer d in one and n and set i d equal to i, okay? And then we randomly choose uh, other instance such that all other solutions are known by the simulator. Uh, for this instance, it requires that each instance should be indistinguishable such that D is unknown to the adversary. This one is very important in the security proof. Um, so we have that. The solution is, uh, this one is set in I instance D, so this solution will appear in one of edges at level D only, level D only. And we will use known solution at level, uh, from level D plus one to N, just from the it's downside level. D plus one to N to field user list queries. And we learn, we are then pick uh, one query uh, from remained queries known as candidate queries as a valid query. And this uh, is the detailed definition. A query is a valid query if its weight is equal to G to AIB. And a query is a candidate query if there exists a red and solid path from, query, from this uh, response node, from its end node to a leaf node at level N. And of course, all queries at level n are candidate queries. And we define this uh, queries usually as a query if there is just no red and solid path from the n node hq spot to a div node at level n. And this one is, a, is, a, is an example. Suppose d is true, the simulator doesn't know which query is a valid query, okay? But according to the definition, we have these two queries are usually as a query because there's no uh, red and solid path to a leaf. And these three queries are candidate queries because they do have a red and solid path to leave. And this is the main difference uh, compared to ours and to the traditional approach. In traditional approach, uh, uh, we just uh, generally chose uh, a query from all queries, the query set with a Q number 
uh, huge number. But in our approach, we recently chose one query from candidate queries at level D only. And in this work, uh, we use the level one to uh, have this kind of results. If the number of uh, valid queries uh, at level I over the number of candidate queries at level I is smaller than this probability hold for all I, okay, then we prove that the adversary must make more than Q queries. But if they are just uh, Q, hashi queries at most, then there must exist uh, integer I star such that this kind of rate is larger than its probability, okay? So uh, when this kind of unknown number D, yeah, that's why D is, must be unknown, uh, is equal to I star, then we have this probability, blah, 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 is larger than this one. So this one is the lower bound of our success probability of finding a correct solution. Uh, this one is an example. Suppose D is true and Q is uh, eight. We need to prove that the lower bound probability is this one, and this will the probability for some I star to be uh, at least one over square root of eight. Uh, suppose these are the Q set made by the adversary. This is the set made by the adversary. And when D is one, means that the solution must exist this one or this one or this one. But according to this one kind of approach, this query is a useless query because there's no dread and sorry pass. So we just remove it and there are only two candidate queries only left. So a random pick, we have this probability is large than this one. Uh, this is the second example. Uh, the only difference is one. This one is a valid query, okay? This is the query, bad query set made by the adversary. But here, it's very easy to see that when D is true, it's easy to see that this the probability for this one is three over five. So this probability is, the, is also large than the probability, okay? And so these are the main three difference of this uh, uh, three approach. Uh, to apply this, we just give a framework, okay? And to apply the series, we must have that uh, the scheme must be simulated using the generated instance. This one is very important. And the defined challenge query, the defined challenge query must be made by the adversary to break the scheme. These are the conditions in order to apply the series. And applications, uh, in this work we saw two applications. The first one is the generic uh, combustion for uh, uh, key encapsulation mechanisms. We can construct a one-way camp to end camp with a small finding loss in the random work mode with, without expanding cybertestite. But this one has a condition. And also, have, uh, we also discussed the, the tight deduction for key change and uh, the in, uh, sketch free deduction. But this one is much more complicated. So please refer to our paper for details. And the advantage uh, is that we can have a title deduction with a small fighting loss. The disadvantage is that we will have a long uh, private secret key a linear in the number of n, and n is 10, so it's about 10 times. Okay, uh, conclusion. We introduced the fighting loss in the in CHP deduction. This one is just a very special in in deduction. And we propose iterate general local to reduce the fighting loss. So these are the main difference compared to the traditional approach and the CKS approach. And at the end, we solved uh, two applications of this approach. Uh, one is in encryption and one is the ch key change. Yeah, that's all. Thanks. Any question? So you said your, your method works for all problems, but you need kind of this parallelizable nature, right? You like you need to be able to build a scheme where you can split things yes, up. Yes, yes. I mean that for this kind of uh, yes, for uh, I mean that for this kind of scheme, the scheme must be satisfied this kind of framework. Or uh, for easy, I mean that if we uh, disclose the simulation, right, that's to satisfy this kind of framework. These two conditions. Otherwise, this kind of approach doesn't work. Yes. But uh, but I said this one is independent of the adopted assumption. Question? Can we see the slide just before the conclusion? Conclusion, okay. Yeah, we just before. For this one? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, to find, you need a longer private key. I, I missed the. Oh, the well, longer private key, right? This yeah. one? Yeah. Because actually, it's, uh, in our construction, we use an instance, right? Actually, it's each instance, you can see that each instance is used to simulate uh, an independent scheme. And we try to combine all of them together. That's why we use uh, uh, one instance used to simulate a uh, scheme, and there's the key, right? 
So finally, the final scheme we have n keys, something like that. Any other question? Questions? Some, okay. Yes.